Lucas, who's here this morning alongside Dr. Louise Newson. Hello, both uh, menopause and HRT uh, specialist. First of all, Kirsty, just remind us of your tale over the last uh, last years. Well, in my late 40s, as I say when I was about 49, 50, I hit menopause, although I, I don't think I was entirely sure what was happening to me. I know yeah. it's peculiar. I, as it happens to all of case, us, but we never talk know. about it. Yeah. Um, but I started to have anxiety attacks. I'd always been... I'm not somebody who suffers from anxiety normally. Um, mood swings, started biting my husband's head off, losing my temper. For no I, reason. No reason. Yeah. Um, sleeping badly. Then the hot flushes came and I um, went um, uh, and got HRT and it was, it was miraculous. I, I, it, within about two or three weeks, I felt so much better. Um, I was worried about the breast cancer risk because I had some breast cancer in my family from my grandmother. Um, but, you know, I thought, well, this is a, this is a, a bit of a calculated risk. Then I went for a... Uh, after about four years on HRT, I went for a routine mammogram that's, that you get called for by the NHS. Happens Absolutely. every three years automatically. Um, and they picked up um, a cancerous lump in my left breast. Right. Um, fortunately, it was caught early. Um, and I immediately thought... I asked the doctor when I was diagnosed, I went, is it my fault? Is it because I took HRT? And he actually said, no, it's not. It's probably genetic. But he said, you've got to stop taking the HRT because it'll act like a sort of... could act. I think he said, could act like a sort of fertiliser, which is a terrible image. So I went home, chucked it all out. Yeah. And what they don't tell breast cancer patients very often is that, you know, because um, you're so concentrating on the operation and the radiotherapy, and I had to have chemo because mine had actually made a little leak to one of my lymph nodes. Oh. Um, and so you're really just concentrating on getting through that. Nobody actually tells you that when you're finished, you'll be turbocharged mm -hmm. into really bad menopause symptoms. Now, I Worse than they were in the They were beginning. much worse. OK. I was getting flushes every kind of 15, 20 minutes. I would wake up in the night. My sheets were drenched. I couldn't sleep. Um, my uh, joints were stiff. I felt quite depressed. And I just assumed, well, that's it. I can never, you know... And I, and I tried all sorts of other things, um, which did help a bit. Um, I went on um, antidepressants for my anxiety. Um, I got um, locally applied vaginal oestrogen, which is completely safe for all women, for vaginal dryness. So that doesn't affect any, any no. risk in the and most, and I think doctors all, um, all accept that. I tried acupuncture cutting down on coffee and alcohol, and all these things helped a bit. And I just kind of thought, well, this is my lot, and hopefully it'll go away. And, you know, three years went by, and I was it still didn't... suffering. And my... Um, I started to... Because I'm a journalist and everything's copy, I would started <laughs> to write about, about having breast cancer. And I went... I was invited by my a surgeon, actually, to a conference at the Royal Society, and Louise was there. And there was an American doctor called Dr Avram Blooming who had written a book called Oestrogen Matters. And he talked about the fact that, um, uh, that the really big study that purported to link breast cancer to HRT was actually fundamentally flawed. Mm -hmm. And um, that, in his view, there was no reason why um, some breast cancer patients, not all, but some, um, could take HRT, and, in fact, he'd put his wife and daughter, who'd both had breast cancer, and they were on HRT. And I thought, wow! Um, and so you went back on it? And so I decided to look into going back on it, and I've gone back on it, and I've been on back on it for about uh, two and a half, three months, and I feel much, much better. That's fun. That's fantastic, Kirsty, and thank you for telling the story to everybody. Because mm. it's, it's just, you know, I mean, I've been through it, menopausal yeah. depression, and uh, it's something until a couple of years ago that people didn't really want to talk no, about very totally. much. And all this misinformation that's been out yeah. there, as you rightly mm, yeah. say, you know, when you said this yeah. initial thing. So please just explain yeah. to us I mean, the now big reason that people are patients. scared of HRT is the breast cancer risk. And yeah. um, that's why most women, when they come, they say, oh, gosh, no, I haven't wanted it at all. So there's a few really important factors 
facts. Firstly, if young women who are under the age of 45 have an early menopause, and that affects around one in 100 women, so it's common, if they take any type of HRT, there's no increased risk because all they're doing is replacing the hormones their body would otherwise be producing. So that's a big tick for HRT. Okay, lovely. Then if women have had a hysterectomy, so they've had their womb removed, they usually only need oestrogen, so they don't need a progesterone, which is what's needed to protect the lining of the womb. Those women don't have an increased risk of breast cancer taking HRT. So again, those women can be really reassured because the oestrogen is the safe bit. Everyone thinks the oestrogen is the bad bit because if you have breast cancer, they talk about whether it's oestrogen receptor positive or negative. But most women, thankfully, don't have breast cancer. So those women who take oestrogen do not have a higher risk of breast cancer. Then you look at most of us who've still got our wombs, having progesterone with oestrogen. The older types of progesterone, the study that Kirsty was talking about, yeah. showed the risk was very small. So your risk is higher if you're overweight or have a couple of glasses of wine most nights. Of getting breast of cancer. Of getting breast cancer. And so most women who drink don't have much risk, right. but it's even less if they take HRT. Now we prescribe these body identical HRT, so it's a natural progesterone available through the NHS. Those women don't have an increased risk for the first five years. After that time, the risk is lower than with the old type. But a lot of women who are menopausal, as you know, feel rubbish. So they put on weight because they're eating badly, they're not exercising, um, they're drinking a bit more alcohol to numb their symptoms. So they're and those are risk, risk factors mm. for, bre for breast cancer. More than HRT. More than HRT. So that's really important. And a lot of women think if they've got a family history of breast cancer, they can't have HRT. Well, so there's a lot of indivi so individuality. Much. It's really totally about individual thank choice. So, thank you so much, Louise. I'm really sorry. I could t we we yeah. could talk about this and um, probably will after uh, for another hour but um, thank you so much no, for explaining it there is a lot more information on our website and thank you Kirsty for all that you're thank doing you. with this